What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today is a good day. Today we're gonna be talking about the 10 best pistols under $1,000. I hope you guys are excited, you've been asking for this a lot, so here you go. Now some stipulations on this list, none of the guns on my previous best of will be on this. So we have a best under 350, a best under 500, a best under 750. So if you don't see your favorite gun on this list, that's probably why, or I just don't fucking like it. Now there's a lot of guns to choose from under a thousand and I can't get them all. So the other stipulation is that they have to be reviewed on the channel. I have to know they're good. This isn't one of those channels where I just post a bunch of cool video up and give you just some explanation somebody wrote on the internet. I actually test these guns and I give you my opinion. So I hope you appreciate that. But it does limit the pool of guns I can choose from, but we have almost everything, so not really. Before we do that, I want to mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. Because of you guys, we have all the cool guns and ammo on the channel, and I really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, that's the best way to do it. Just go in the link in the description below and sign up. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa, the YSS, as always. And then finally, a link to my Twitter as well, where we're doing all kinds of cool stuff, exclusive content, deals. You can go down to the description to find that, or you can just go to honestoutlaw underscore at X. Now, in at number 10 is the SIG P320. I'm just fucking kidding you. It's actually the Walter PPQ Q5 match. Now, the Walter PPQ Q5 match doesn't get a lot of love because it has been overtaken by the PDP, but I think it should. The PPQ was one of my original loves. I absolutely love this gun. It looks like Batman's gun, and I love the way it looks, and I love the way it shoots even more. One of the best triggers of all time in the polymer frame world. If you're looking for a lightweight, striker-fired pistol that not only looks cool, but you can shoot it like 150 yards, the PPQ Q5 match is definitely the way to go. Comes with some six serrations, has optic mounts, has a Picatinny rail on it, and again, that precock striker trigger modeled after the P99, which is what made the PPQ famous in the first place, makes it very accurate and very quick. It's got a shorter grip than the PDP and not as much texture, but in my opinion, it looks much cooler, especially with all those blue features. It looks really, really neat. It comes with a fiber optic front sight and a blacked out rear, and we do have a full thousand round review of it where it was absolutely perfect in reliability. What more can you want? A lightweight gun that's extremely accurate, got a great trigger. They're actually pretty affordable now because they are now making the PDP instead of the PPQ series. So you can find them pretty cheap and they are gonna work perfectly. They're also gonna be pretty unique because these days not a lot of people own them. So I would recommend you go and pick one up. Now, in at number nine is gonna be the HK VP9L. I like H and K, they make bomb-proof guns, and I'm kind of a sucker for them over the years, so a little bit of bias showing here. I'm a big fan of the MP5, the USP series, and the HK VP9 is their latest and greatest. A striker-fired polymer frame pistol designed after the Walter P99 has a precock striker trigger in it, giving it one of the best triggers on the market. It also has ergonomic grip panels in the side and on the back, so you can change the entire grip in case you have big old hands like me, and you want a larger or very small grip. You can actually do that because it's more adjustable than almost every polymer frame gun as well. Very accurate, very reliable, comes optics ready, cool slide cuts, and the gun just looks mean. For under $1,000, it is an awesome choice. Now, the VP9 is a striker-fired polymer frame pistol, very similar to the P320, although it obviously doesn't have the fire control unit, but it does have a better trigger, and in my opinion, much more reliability. What's behind me? The black hat. I don't know if that's good luck or bad luck. I don't own a cat, by the way. I am not your friend. Get, go on, get, we're filming. Now the VP9L comes around 750 to 1000, depending on where you get it. And you can also get the long slide kits, which is pretty cool. So I definitely think it deserves a spot on this list. Now for number eight, I really wanted to put a 1911 on this list. And I was thinking about going with the Colt competition since in my opinion, it is the best 1911 under $1,000. However, if you go just slightly above it, about 1,050, maybe almost to 1,100, you can actually get yourself this Hayes Custom 1911, which is one of my absolute personal favorites. And I'm kind of bending the rules a little bit just to put it on the list. Now this is a Rock Island Armory 1911 when it 
first gets made and then Hayes Custom does it up with tons of features to make it similar in quality and shootability to a $2,000 or $3,000 gun and you get it for a little bit over a thousand so I definitely wanted to add it. Now it has rose gold features to it, it has front slide serrations, an adjustable rear blacked out sight with a front fiber optic. It takes 10 round 1911 9mm magazines and it comes with good texture on the back and then they put some grip tape on the front with G10 grip panels. It has ambi controls and a serrated uh, slide release and the gun shoots unbelievably well. This is as fast and as accurate as my Wilson Combat CQB but for about a third of the price. Hit. 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 Well, you were rocking and rolling there. Making it so hard to beat, I had to put it on the list. Now, if you're looking for absolutely under a thousand, definitely go with the Colt Competition. It is a great gun and Colt does make good 1911s, but I would consider this one to be just a little bit better. In at number seven is gonna be the Taurus Raging Hunter 44 Mag. No recoil on those. Big gun, comp, so it does help a lot. Got some double. Woo! It seems crazy that a Taurus would be on a best under a thousand list, but I gotta tell you, I love this damn gun. This is one of the coolest looking and one of the best shooting 44 Magnums I've ever bought. I have several 44 Magnums that are supposed to be higher in quality than this, but for whatever reason, this thing really kicks ass. Now, I'm not the biggest Taurus guy, but I will say, that this is probably one of their crowning achievements. For well under a thousand, you can get a full framed 44 Magnum with a dual lock on the cylinder, six shots, you get a rubber grip, double single action, an adjustable rear with a target front, you get a full rail to put an RMR, anything you want, you can hang a Surefire Scout light on there, and you get a compensated barrel, which you can actually compensate or not. So they're drilled and tapped so you can put in little uh, screws and you can make it compensated or not, which is pretty cool. Now the trigger on it is way better than it should be for a Taurus, you can see here this is the double action, which is on par or even slightly better than my Colt Python or my Colt Anaconda, sorry, and then the single action is also really good. Very light, very crisp, and the gun is super accurate. <laughs> is it accurate enough to hunt with? I would say that's your answer, right? Lowest recoil of any 44 mag I've ever shot just simply because it has a very long barrel, eight inch barrel, and it is compensated. So you added the weight and you add the compensation, which reduces a lot of that recoil, making it a very viable and very shootable gun. Uh, it's reliable because revolvers are pretty hard to make unreliable unless they're very low in quality. And luckily this is one of Taurus's higher quality guns, so I haven't seen any issues with it. And Getting into a 44 mag for under 1,000 is hard to do anyway. Getting into it with all of these features is extremely hard to do, which is why I think the Raging Hunter is a great choice for under 1,000. Moving to number six, we have my old school Glock 34. Now there are many guns that in most eyes beat this gun today, but I love the Glock 34. I've been shooting it for many, many years and I still use it all the time. Very customizable, five and a half inch barrel, great velocity, great expansion on the hollow points, comes with the Glock MOS system, comes with uh, standard Glock sights, which kind of sucks, but the 34 in my opinion is the best shooting Glock that you can get. Super reliable, magazines and holsters are readily available, and it's a really good shooting gun. The 34 was kind of a go-to for USPSA shooters for a really long time, and if you wanna see this trombone sing, all you have to do is go over to uh, Bob Vogel's page and see how fast somebody can actually shoot one of these. The Glock 34 will go down in history as not only one of the most reliable, one of the most shootable, but certainly one of the coolest guns ever, because it was also used in the best John Wick movie, John Wick 2. I'm just kidding, John Wick 1's better, but the guns are cooler than John Wick 2, and the Glock 34, I would definitely pick over the P30L. The P30L is a great gun, but the 34 is even better. In at number five, what I would consider a slightly better version of the Glock 34, the Smith & Wesson 2.0 Competitor. 
Now, this is Smith's answer to the 34 or to the competition scene uh, pistol. It is what I would consider to be the best M&P that you can get. This is actually the metal frame. It has an aluminum frame with polymer grip inlays. It comes with a magwell. It comes with Smith's optics mounting system, a blacked out rear, a front fiber optic, this very cool butler cut that you get to see on a lot of like Terran uh, Tacticals Glock 34s. I actually have that on my Glock 34 just because that's the cut that they have in John Wick. And this is kind of like my John Wick M&P. So I figured it would be poetic to put them one right after the other. And honestly, if I had to pick one of the two, I have a lot of nostalgia, a lot of classic uh, vibes with this guy, but for serious use, this is a better shooting gun. It has a better trigger out of the box. It has a full uh, Picatinny rail instead of the accessory rail. It's a little bit heavier gun, so it shoots a little bit smoother in my personal opinion, and the M&Ps have always soaked up the recoil really good anyway. Now, on top of that, you actually get some awesome front slide serrations. You get the cool cuts on top, and you get a lot more texture with the M&P right out of the box. You also get the magwell. You get three or four mags and I think you just get a lot more value with the M&P than you do the Glock but either one does about the exact same job both of them have the same barrel length both of them have the same magazine capacity and both of them are made for pretty much the same thing they also have very similar reliability both of them are absolutely excellent so you could have a tactical gun you could have a home defense gun you could have a competition gun or you could have a fairly large carry gun and both of these would do the exact same job really well it sort of just depends on what ergonomics you like better and personally I like the look and I like the grip angle of the M&P better so it's a little bit higher on the list but they both would be amazing in the right hands. If you can shoot really, really good and you have a Glock 34, you're gonna shoot really, really good. If you shoot really, really good and you have an M&P 2.0, you're gonna shoot really, really good. In at number four, another striker fired pistol. But this time, it's Canix Premium Series. I don't know if you're picking up on this, but a lot of these are the premium model of all of the previous guns we've had in the 750 and 500. But hey, if they're the best guns, they're the best guns. And the Canix Steel Frame Rival is an amazing choice for an under $1,000 gun and is the new darling of USPSA. It was once the X5 Legion and the popular one for this year is the steel frame rival. And the reason why that is, is because you get this for the same price as the SIG, but it is considerably better in my personal opinion. First, we have adjustable uh, palm swell grips, which is very cool. I always like when the back straps encompass the whole grip because why just add a slightly protruded back strap that makes the gun a little awkward when you can actually make the entire grip fill out very nicely. I actually have some lock grips I'm gonna be putting on this soon. I just haven't got around to them yet. We also have an included optics plate system similar to the Glock uh, or M&P but it's just Canix version and you can put whatever optics plate you want on there. I actually have the RMR mount. A lot of these guns have optics plates but no optic because I'm a gun reviewer and I only have so many optics so they often jump from gun to gun so that is one of the reasons why they look like that. We have a blacked out rear with a front fiber optic just like all the other guns to take off the rear sight to put the optic plate on so it'll be in the filler. We have the best serrations of all the group in my personal opinion. The serrations on the Canix rival is done super well. We have a Picatinny rail. We have some cutouts here to reduce weight and and then we have a uh, serrated barrel, which is really unique looking. However, I don't think it does anything for you. A fluted barrel, full guide rod, and then we have the absolute best striker fired trigger on the planet, which is what the SFX steel frame rival has. As you can see here, this is a striker fired trigger. That's crazy. It actually has less travel and less poundage than a lot of my single action guns, which is phenomenal. We have a adjustable or swappable magazine release, uh, which you can see is actually on the left side because I'm too lazy and I didn't uh, switch it over. I actually let a USPSA masterclass shooter borrow this and do part of the review. Tim Fisher, if you're out there, uh, he shot a thousand rounds through this, had zero malfunctions. You haven't seen the thousand round review yet, but it will be up eventually. He absolutely loved the gun so much, he bought one. And just to let you know, he used to shoot limited with an Atlas. So if this isn't much of a downgrade from a $4,000 2011, that's really saying something. It's got all the indicators you'd want. It's got ambi controls and it looks super slick with this uh, complete nickel looking color, but you can get it in black too if you're into Batman or if you just like to be tactical. So overall, I think the Steel Frame Rival is an absolutely excellent gun. But coming in from about 800 to $1,000, it's incredible. In at number three, we have maybe the best carry gun pretty close, the P365 XL Coyote. Now it's sort of a Spectre Comp. I'm not really sure what to call this. Is it the Spectre Comp Coyote or is it just the P365 XL? 
I'm know. unsure of the name, but the Spectre comp, for some reason, with the gold trigger, comes out over a thousand. In the Coyote version, the tan version, is under a thousand. And it is my wife's carry gun in this configuration right here. She actually took it right out of her carry rotation. So, how could it not be on the list? It is probably the best P365 you can get for a number of reasons. First off, you get the upgraded capacity of the P365 XL, the 12 round magazines, which is super nice. You can also put the 17s in there too, if you want a little bit more, or you can just carry it as a backup mag. It also comes with the great texture. It comes with a better trigger than the P365. It comes with an optics mounting system that you can install your EPS carry on. It has awesome iron sights as the SIG 365s do. They have nice sights with a blacked out rear and an HD front. Obviously has a rail for a light, although it will only accept the lights dedicated for the P365 like the TLR7 sub. We have the a very cool uh, included comp in here. Now a lot of people don't like this, some people do. I'm in the camp of I do like it. I like that it has some compensation, but it doesn't affect reliability. Now if you cut into the barrel with the comp, it will get more uh, compensation and you will feel a little bit more recoil control. However, uh, in my experience, that does cause malfunctions and it does cause the gun to get dirty very, very quickly. Now this comp gets a little dirty, but not nearly as much as some of those. It also doesn't have any backsplash to the optic that I'm aware of, which is a cool feature. Now we get this cool serrations on top. You get uh, the uh, three inch barrel with the four inch slide. So you don't get any more velocity, but you do get a very controllable, very shootable platform with a really good capacity, a good caliber, and it's super small. So it's only one inch wide, and I think it's what, like 20 ounces? For a polymer frame gun that's super light, super shootable, and that's what you want, right? You wanna carry a sufficient caliber, you wanna carry a good capacity, you wanna have a very shootable gun with low recoil and good accuracy, and then you wanna have it for under $1,000. And if you want all those things, you can stop right here at the P365 XL Coyote Spectre Cop. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it's called. Whatever it's called. All right, at number two, I figured why not put another tan gun. Now this is my favorite Beretta ever. This is the M9A4. This is a double single action pistol with an aluminum frame, a steel slide, and an open top on the barrel. We have a threaded barrel right from the factory. We have an included optics mounting system. We have steel uh, tritium sights. We have a upgraded safety decocker here from the original. So the original wasn't upswept quite as much and you could accidentally engage it when you were using it. And that was a bit of an issue for soldiers on the field, obviously. Also, some of the issues the soldiers had on the field were the fact that it didn't have uh, a uh, very good magazines, but we'll get to that later. Now, this one has some lock grips on it because I do love lock grips. And I think that the palm swells look really great on this and give it added texture. Now, the trigger on the M9A4 is absolutely Absolutely excellent, but the thing I really like about it, it is my absolute favorite gun to suppress. As far as handguns go, because this doesn't have the Browning tilted action and it comes threaded for a suppressor right away, you can put a suppressor on this and you can run it super dirty and it will keep running over and over and over again. Now, I've heard some people have issues with the Beretta M9 series, but I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the military sort of abusing them, not changing springs, and on top of that, using really cheap coatings on the magazines. Whereas this gun, in my personal experience, we have almost 2,000 rounds for this, if not more. Most of that being suppressed, I've never cleaned it, ever. And on top of that, I barely ever lube the damn thing. You can see how dirty it is if I open the chamber and the thing runs like a top. Around 32 ounces, the full size five inch gun. So it is a hefty gun, but you definitely can carry it if you are in that game. However, I would recommend you use it for home defense or plinking or maybe some competition. It's really best suited for that being a full size metal frame gun. Now, I didn't put any honorable mentions because most of them were on the 750, 500, and 350 list, so I would recommend you go watch those again. That being said, let's get into it with number one. And I'll give you five seconds to guess what it is. No, I won't. It's the CZ Shadow 2. <laughs> it's my favorite gun of all time. What a surprise, it's number one on another list. But it's my favorite gun, so if I leave it off, it's gonna look weird, right? It is a 4.8 inch barreled, double single action pistol with a full steel frame, steel slide, and it is the fastest and most accurate handgun you can buy for under $1,000. It would make an absolutely excellent home defense gun. It makes an absolutely excellent competition gun. This was my USPSA competition gun for all of last year in carry optics in the exact way that you see it now. Primary machine slide, 
SRO on top and lock grips on its butt. Now you get 17 or 20 rounds in the magazine depending on what magazine you use. You get an extended magazine release, you get ambi controls. My favorite part about the Shadow 2 Let's start off with the grip. It had 25 lines per inch checkering on the back and the front, and the beaver tail is done better than any other handgun in history. You can get super high on the gun, drive down with your thumb on the safety, and you can control recoil on this gun better than any gun that I've ever used, other than maybe a souped up Atlas Gunworks 2011. But considering those come in between five and $7,000, and you can get this one for like 995, this is quite a steal. So super low recoil because of how high you can get up on it. It has those internal slide rails with a very small slide mass keeping the uh, overall uh, bore axis low to your hand especially for a double action gun and then we have the a uh, ton of weight out on the dust cover so the gun itself comes in at about 42 ounces and a lot of that is going to be in the frame it's got a very light slide very light grip so almost all of the weight on the gun is keeping it flat so you can shoot these super fast and super accurately very accurate cold hammer forged barrel i can shoot six inch plates with this thing at 100 yards because the trigger is like two and a half pounds now because i've worn it in this this has so many rounds through it but i think new they come in for around maybe three or four pounds on the double action or the single action and then the double action is excellent as well smooth all the way through very excellent trigger very excellent recoil impulse super accurate super reliable if not the most reliable gun i've ever had it's definitely the most reliable competition gun so reliable accurate fast the only downside to the shadow 2 is that it's double single action so you got to get used to that a little bit and then also it's going to be a little too heavy for concealed carry sadly you're just relegated to having all kinds of fun with it I think it's the best gun for under a thousand. What do you guys think? Let me know your list in the comment section below. I'm gonna go down there and fight with you about it if I don't like it, but I'll probably steal a couple ideas because I don't have every gun, but I want every gun. So make sure to put your list below and hopefully you can see the guns that I missed on the channel soon. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Why is there always an animal? Just... I don't know. There was an animal all day. I don't own this cat. I don't even know where this cat came from. Get. Come on, get, bud. Get, get. Whose ever cat it. this is? Come I get love it. it.